Well, I've got a, um, an interesting topic. It certainly got me up at the early hours of the morning studying it. It's fascinating. But it's also a word that I believe is in season as well. Um, it's something that God has laid upon my heart. Um, we're seeing a lot of it played out around us, especially right now at the moment. It's a, a lot of it has been in the news. So we're going to be talking about the politics of the last days, which I think is a very important um, topic to discuss. First of all, politics is, well, from the Greek, uh, means of relating to citizens. It is the making of a common decision for a, a group of people. No matter what you can do, you cannot escape politics. There's no way that you can escape it, although a lot of us would love to escape politics. <laughs> I mean, you often hear, you know, that the, the two subjects that you want to avoid the most is, what is it? Religion and politics, you know. I mean, I remember hearing about the, the Catholic priest who was in his confessional box and a woman um, came into the confessional box and she said, um, forgive me, Father, for I've sinned, for I've killed a politician. And the priest said, dear madam, you come here to confess your sins, not to tell me about your community service. <laughs> Oh, uh, dear. You can't escape politics. And here's the thing. There is a price for all of us to pay if we turn a blind eye to it. And that's reality. That's reality. Pericles said this. He said, those who take no interest in politics will soon discover that politics will take an interest in them. Plato said, the price of apathy towards public affairs is to be ruled by evil men. Isn't that truth? Now, the central aspect behind all the agendas, and look, there's lots of agendas. There's lots of conspiracy theories here and there. You know, you've got your new world order and global go governance and all this kind of stuff. But here's the, the, there is a common vehicle through which all that will happen, and it's politics. The vehicle through which Satan uses to enslave the masses, and he's done this for thousands of years, has always been through Politics. Now, there are two different dimensions in regard to politics, and this is something that uh, you, will, you have your left and you have your right. And it's very important to understand the two different spectrums within the left and right side of politics. First of all, let's look at the right. The right simply represents individual liberty, free markets, private ownership of property, small government limited by a constitution. Now, of course, there's other different things there as well as freedom of the press and freedom of speech and other things there as well. Now, the understanding, and this is the big one, there's also the understanding that your rights were given to you by God. Okay, we'll come back and we'll revisit that. The left, on the other hand, can be summed up by two words. Let's see if anyone can guess it. There's two words. Does anyone guess, can guess it? No. Close. You got one half. Well, it's the answer is this. No, big, big government. Big government. It is where government controls almost everything. It takes, it takes off one person and gives it to another. It oversees a person's life from the cradle to the grave. Government is the highest law in the land, and because it is the highest law, there is no appeal against it. Now, does that sound all willian to you? Yeah. Ronald Reagan said this, and this is probably one of his most famous quotes. He says, as government expands, liberty contracts. As government expands, liberty contracts. This gives you a, a bit of an understanding of the different spectrums and helps you to understand it. On the far left, you have 100% government, and on the far right, zero government. Anarchy is no government and doesn't make sense at all. On the far left, you have socialism, communism, and Nazism. All systems that have a socialist form of government with only slight variances between them. Traditionally, 
Republicans were slightly to the right of center and Democrats were slightly to the left. In recent years though, through the radical influence of the media, Hollywood, and the multitude of Marxist professors in our universities, both parties have slid to the left. With the Democrats going so far, they have openly joined hand in hand with the radicals. That's why they all work together. All the groups on the left now have the same goal, a socialist America. Now, isn't that interesting? And this is not just America alone. We're seeing this played out in Australia as well. Yeah, I mean, this is, and it's not just Australia. I mean, I mean, Europe. I mean, Europe has been a um, proverbial frog in the saucepan for many, many years now. And this is why we have so many different socialist governments in, uh, in Europe. But uh, this, is your, this is the reality of the political landscape at the moment. Now, what does the extreme left look, look like? Okay, well, consider this. More human beings were slaughtered in the 20th century than all previous centuries combined. Think about that. More people have been killed in times of peace in all the wars in history combined. 135 million have been killed under communism. Communism. So what's the difference between socialism and communism? And this is something that's it's interesting that we need to grasp. Ayn Rand says... There is no difference between communism and socialism except in the way of achieving the same goal. Communism proposes to enslave men by force, socialism by voting. It's the same difference between murder and suicide. Vladimir Lenin said, democracy is indispensable to socialism. That's important to understand because that's exactly what... Uh, Ayn Rand says, when she says, socialism by voting. What does Lenin says? Democracy is, in, is indispensable to socialism. He also said that the goal of socialism is communism. Is communism dead? Well, there are more communist party members in the world today than there ever has been in history. That's a sobering thought right there. And there are more communist countries in the world today than there ever has been in history. Dinesh D'Souza, he's a very prominent Christian apologist and he's also a, um, a brilliant political commentator. He says, there are probably more Marxists on the faculty of our elite colleges than there are in all of Russia and Eastern Europe. And now that is a fair assessment. That might seem a bit of a shock to you, but this is happening also in Australia right now. There are hordes of Marxist professors within our universities, Australian universities. This is why we have many of our young people who are going to university and they're coming out as leftists. And I see it happening time and time and time again. And by the way, many of you probably heard about what happened to Corey Bernardi's office yesterday. Trashed by leftists from the Socialist Alliance. That's the organization they were from. Yeah. Now, communism isn't dead. It's just changed its name. L the left rarely refer to themselves these days or as communist or Marxist. However, that said, if you go to the Socialist Alliance's website, they do refer to themselves interchangeably as Marxists and even communists. They're becoming more and more brazen about their political agenda. These days, they usually refer to themselves as liberal, more so in America, not so much here because we have the Australian Liberal Party. And that's why there's that confusion. Because when you hear the term liberal, most of us Australians think the Australian Liberal Party, but that's not the case. In America, liberal means, well, it refers to also a progressive Progressive is the big one. That's the, the main word that most of these people who lean left refer to themselves as progressives. And socialist. 
socialists. You know, gone are the days where socialists were stigmatized with Soviet Russia. But these days to be socialist is hip. It's cool. You're a hipster if you're a socialist, if you're a lefty. And that's the tragic reality of our culture. And it's taking years for the um, Marxist ideology to sneak in to be able to, um, to do that. Now, socialism has now gained so much acceptance in Western society that we now have even a presidential candidate in the United States, Bernie Sanders, who openly refers to himself as a democratic socialist. And that has been the first time that a prominent candidate in America has ever admitted that he was a socialist. And that happened at the, 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 um, the, the Democrat convention or the Democrat um, debate a few months ago. Now, most le leftists, and let's be honest, most leftists are oblivious to what they stand for. They, have, they, they don't really have a clue. You know, there are two opposite ends to those who identify as leftists, and many of them sit anywhere on that, on that spectrum. Those who correctly understand, and this is the first point, those who correctly understand the political philosophy and are active in pushing its agenda. Okay, these people, these people are evil. If they correctly understand what they're doing, they're evil. There's no question about that. Now, two, and this is the most common one. These are those who jump on the bandwagon thinking that being political left is all hipster and cool. Or, and there's a mixture of the two, those who don't want to be stigmatized as right wing. They want to try and get away from right wing. And so they lean left to simply avoid the label. Now, Vladimir Lenin said this, and he was referred to those who uh, championed his cause without understanding his true agenda. You know what he referred to them as? He referred to them as, and this is, look, this is not me being crude or rude, but this is, Lenin said this. He called them useful idiots. Useful idiots. Even though they were championing his agenda. Lenin called them Useful idiots. Now, the left's quest for equality. Now, first of all, you need to understand the left does not believe in obje objective morality. They don't believe in objective right and wrong. They don't believe in good and evil. Okay, so what they do is they, they have to come up with their own, uh, their own brand of right and wrong. They come up with their own morality, their own system of morality. Because we believe in God... We have objective morality. We have absolute truth for us, and we understand that there is right and wrong. But the left have made up their own version of morality, and the way that they define that is through equality. Equality. Now, what equality, it can mean different things for different people, but for, mo for the most part for the left, it, it's... Has anyone heard of Procrustes' bed? Procrustes' bed. This comes from Greek mythology. But there was a man called Procrustes, and he had a, a, a very, um, basically, he had this method of torture. And what he did for people, he had this bed, and it was a certain length. And so if you were too short, what he did, he stretched you until you were long enough to fit the bed. But if you were too tall, he would chop off your feet so that you would fit this bed. This is, uh, it's, it's gross, <laughs> it's a little bit, ooh. But this is Pro Procrestes' bed, and this is, and I said that for a reason, because this is what the left have done. They want equality no matter what, okay? They have no understanding that there are some things that are more equal than others. So what they do, they take minority groups, and they try and elevate them to equal status with the rest of society. And we've seen this. This is why we, we have at the moment this big push to accept transgenders. You've probably seen that in the news. There's a huge push to, to promote transgenders and things like that. Now, the Greek philosopher Aristotle once said this. He said, the worst form of inequality is to try to make unequal things equal. Isn't that interesting? The worst form of equality 
of inequality is to try and make unequal things equal. And that's exactly what the left are doing. They're trying to take unequal things and make them equal. Now, equality is the mantra of socialism. This is it's a central part of socialism. So we have gender equality, marriage equality, family equality, animal equality, class equality. It eventually leads to income equality. If you pushed for this kind of society, what are you left with? You're left with pretty much socialism. This is communism, where everyone is equal. Everyone is on equal pay. There are no distinguishes, distinguishing features between classes. There's all equal class. This is exactly the, the ideology that they're going for. They believe life will be fair and people will be happy when everyone is equal. Now, Winston Churchill said this. He said, socialism is a philosophy of failure, the creed of ignorance, the gospel of envy. Its inherent virtue is the equal sharing of misery. That's socialism, folks, right there. Now, can't equality be a good thing? Well, in some aspects, yes. Equality can be good only when people correctly understand, and this is, again, for Christians, we can identify right equality because we have this objective understanding of right and wrong. 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 13 says this, Our desire is not others might be relieved while you are hard-pressed, but that there might be equality. Now, left-wing Christians will point to that verse and say, See, socialism's in the Bible but they're not taking into the whole context of the whole verse. See, what Paul is talking about, he's saying that people need to be looked after. He's saying, in other words, there are those who have more than enough have a responsibility of the needs of those who don't have enough. For example, widows and orphans. And that's absolutely correct. We need to make sure that widows and orphans are looked after. So where does the attitude behind socialism come from? Well, I'm going to quote you this verse. This is from Isaiah chapter 14. How you have fallen from heaven, morning star, son of the dawn. You have been cast down to the earth, you who once laid low nations. You said in your heart, now see how I've always underlined the letter I. You said in your heart, I will ascend to the heavens. I will raise my throne above the stars of God. I will sit enthroned on the mount of the assembly, on the utmost heights of Mount Zaphon. I will ascend above the tops of the clouds. I will make myself like the Most High. But you will be brought down. You are brought down to the realm of the dead, to the depths of the pit. Now, five times, I, 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 me, 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 me. It sounds like the narcissist opera singer. Me, 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 me. <laughs> Probably shouldn't have gone there. But it is the gospel of self. It all revolves around me. It's about self. Now, but what is the attitude that we are doing to imitate? Well... What does Philippians 2 verses 5 to 7 say? Your attitude should be the same as that of Christ Jesus, who being in very nature God, did not consider what? Equality with God, something to be grasped, but made himself nothing, taking the very nature of a servant being made in human likeness. Isn't that wonderful? I just love that scripture. It's a beautiful scripture. Now, let's look at freedom versus equality, because this really is left versus right. It's freedom versus equality. Milton Friedman said this, A society that puts equality before freedom will get neither. But a society that puts freedom before equality will get a high degree of both. Now, history has proven beyond any doubt that the free enterprise that freedom produces provides more for anyone willing to work than any other system. 
There's no doubt about that. No doubt about that at all. But socialism can be good, right? The left will say socialism is good and will point to, for example, socialized welfare as an example. So say, hey, look, Centrelink. Okay. It's brilliant. You can't knock that. But if anything, that is an example of Christianity retreating from society. Did you realize that? Let me explain. In the days before government socialized welfare, it was the church who took up the role of providing welfare and cared for the sick. That's why we have so many different uh, uh, charity organizations that are named after uh, Christians. St. Vincent de Paul's, we have all these different charities that all had Christian founders because 100 years ago, it was the Christians that, were, that took charge of the welfare. And now listen to this statement here. As the church vacates from society, the government steps in. As the church vacates from society, the government steps in. Now, let's look at the principles of freedom. According to Jefferson, Jefferson was one of the, um, fa the American founding fathers. The only firm basis of our liberties is a strong conviction that they come from God and are not to be violated by man. For this reason, a secular government can never be a limited government, for it recognizes no authority other than itself, no rights other than those it grants, and believes it has a right to control everything it touches. Isn't that a powerful quote? Horace Greeley said, It is impossible to enslave mentally or socially a Bible reading people. The principles of the Bible are the groundwork of human freedom. Can I hear an amen? <laughs> amen. Now, where does freedom come from? Psalm 119, verse 45 says this I will walk about in freedom. For I have sought out your precepts. It was for freedom that Christ set you free. Stand firm then and do not let yourselves be burdened again by a yoke of slavery. Now the Lord is the Spirit. And where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. 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 One of my favorite movies is the movie Braveheart. Who's seen the, many of you have probably seen the movie Braveheart. But the fact that William Wallace struggled and he tried to rally the Scottish clans for freedom and that epic speech where he said they may take our lives, but they will never take our freedom. And freedom, and here's the thing about freedom. Freedom is a relatively new concept. For when you look at the vast majority of human history, most of the peoples have all been enslaved by despots and harsh rulers through the majority of human history. So individual liberty is a relatively new concept. It's a new concept. And wherever Christianity has flourished, freedom comes by default. Isn't that interesting? So what's so great about America? America stands head and shoulders above all other nations in regard to its economy based on capitalism and free enterprise and its enviable culture based on individual freedom. America's philosophy is summed up by the famous phrase in the United States Declaration of Independence. We hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal and there are endowed by their creator with certain un un unalienable rights that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. And this is also something that we have here in Australia. Life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. And check this out. This is absolutely fascinating. In a 10-year study undertaken by the University of Houston, research examined 15,000 documents from America's founders and they determined that 34% of their quotations came from where? The Bible. The highest uh, by far by any source. 
And of course, America's formula uh, of success is outlined in its constitution. And uh, founding father John Adams said this, and this, again, get a hold of this, because this is fascinating. He said, our constitution was made only for a moral and religious people. It is wholly inadequate to the government of any other. Now, you think about that. Right now, we have a president, and soon he'll be out, but I'm not sure whether you realize, but Barack Obama was actually a constitutional lawyer. But he didn't study the Constitution in order to protect it. He studied the Constitution in order to find ways to get around it. And this is why there is a war over the First Amendment and the Second Amendment. Well, First Amendment especially at the moment, because this is religious freedom. This is the freedom to be able to worship God how you want, without having the government infringe upon your religious freedom. And what's been happening lately with the rise of the LGBT movement, and if they've been saying to Christian cake makers, bake us a cake or else. And so what is a Christian, like, a, and by the way, I have to say, this is not just a product of the shelf. If it's a product of the shelf, then fine. You know, th- there's no, pro- there's no issue there. But what they're asking for is a customized wedding cake celebrating their gay marriage. That, then that's a, a very big difference. And of course, a Christian is going to say no, that they can't do that. So, um, and so they say, well, and they, what do they do? They go to the government. And they say, this is discrimination. Where are my rights? And so the government steps in. And now, just of last year, yes, as of last year, we now had Kim Davis, who was a Shire clerk, who refused to issue a marriage permit in the Shire, I think it was in uh, Kentucky, and she was sent to jail. She was sent to jail. We're living in a different world. We are living In a different world. So there is a war over the First Amendment. There's now a war over the Second Amendment with the right to bear arms. And now you probably heard of Justice Scalia, who who died, one of the chief justices. Now, because, and Obama was chomping at the bit because he was like, fantastic, this means I get to choose the next chief justice. And by the way, if you don't understand the state of the US Supreme Court at the moment, it is finally balanced where the conservatives only just have the balance of power. All it will take would be a liberal judge, like another progressive judge, to to go on that bench and it will tip in towards the direction of the left. And that's what's happening. And now he's chosen uh, a new... Well, it hasn't gone through yet, but this particular judge is a radical judge and he is hell-bent on destroying the, the Second Amendment. Why is, and let's have a, let's delve into that just a little bit more for a second. There are, there are mass shootings all over America at the moment. In fact, it's getting, that, it's getting that bad that even the mass shootings aren't even making the news anymore because they're becoming that prominent. It's really upsetting. It's really bad. And so they're saying, take away the guns, take away the guns, take away the guns. So that, but the only problem the only problem with taking away the guns is that this is, again, this is assault on the, on, the, on the Constitution, on the amendments. And why was the Constitution written? Why? It was written only for a moral and religious people. It is wholly inadequate for the government of any other. Think about that. So when they, just, when they remove the Constitution, you can expect the, 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 um, the nation to move in one direction left. So let's have a look at the, um, well, let's have a look at the, the, the father of the left, Karl Marx. Now, most lefties try to distance themselves from this. They try to distance themselves from the fact that the father of their ideology is Karl Marx. Now, American economist Henry Hazlitt said this. He said, the whole gospel of Karl Marx can be summed up in a single sentence. Hate the man who is better off than you. That's it. Hate the man who is better off than you. 
So they're like, and this is the, the, the mentality of a spoiled brat. They shouldn't have that. Oh, look at that. This is the mentality that many, and it's tragic. Most college kids in America have this attitude. And it goes on to say, never under any circumstances admit that his success may be due to his own efforts. Oh, no, 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 no. To the productive contrib contribution he has made to the whole community. No, always attribute his success to the exploitation. And this is why there is such a war against capitalism at the moment. Capitalism is evil. Capitalism is evil. And they do it by shouting on megaphones that have been built by capitalism. They organize their, the protesters on their iPhone 6, which has been built by capitalism. You know, I mean, it, it's truly extraordinary. But this is it. It says, always attribute success to the exploitation, the cheating, the more or less open robbery of others. So Marx was an agitator. He was an agitator. It's all about rubbing the sore raw and getting people upset and saying, well, look at the top 1%. How could they live like that? This is the mentality behind Marxism. Now, let's the, the next guy, and by the way, within Soviet Russia, there was a, an unholy trinity, an unholy trinity with Marx, Lenin, and Stalin. Lenin institutionalized Marx's teaching into the union of the Soviet socialist republics. There's that word again, socialist. The union of the Soviet socialist republics. And he said this, he said, while the state exists, there can be no freedom. And when there is no freedom, there, will be, there is no state. Let's look at the third member of the unholy trinity, Stalin, and boy, was he a bad guy. He was an absolute shocker. Death is the solution to all problems. No man, no problem. One death is a tragedy. One million statistic. And he says, I believe in only one thing only, the power of human will. Me, 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 me. Self, 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 self. It's no surprise that it ends in death, 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 death. Now, we're going to move on from the, the unholy trinity of the Soviet Union, and we're going to move on to now. Now, you might remember those who, who were here last time we, when we talked about Islam, and we talked about cultural jihad. Do you guys remember that? Cultural jihad. Now, cultural jihad was a strategy because the Muslims believed they could never overpower American military. American militarily, so they came up with a cultural way of doing it where they slowly introduced Islam. Joshua also talked about that earlier. But Antonio Gramsci, now make sure you remember that name because this guy is probably responsible for more of the social ills within Western society than any other person. In fact, he's probably the most underrated of them all because this man is so unbelievably dangerous in regard to his ideology. So Gramsci was the one who planned, who devised a plan to introduce Marxism into a culture through a gradual process by influencing every aspect of society to warm to the idea of socialist policies. He's a baddie. And by the way, Gramsci differentiated to Marx because Marx wanted the destruction of all churches. He wanted the destruction of religion. Gramsci was more cunning. He said, no, no, no. He said, let's infiltrate the churches and turn them against capitalism. Now, haven't we been seeing that today? We see many different left-wing churches that, are, that, that lean left. And it's, a, it's tragedy. Now, the father of the left-wing activism... His name was Saul Alinsky. This is another person that you need to remember. Saul Alinsky was a devoted follower of Antonio Gramsci. He is best known for his infamous book, Rules for Radicals, which is a manual for radical activists. Now, Gramsci, uh, sorry, Saul Alinsky, his book, Rules for Radicals, is made up of 12 different rules. Have a look at them because it's fascinating when you look at the different ways in which the left are trying to undermine our society. 
It's all straight out of the book of Saul Alinsky. For example, let's look at rule number one. Power is not only what you have, but what the enemy thinks you have. Isn't that interesting? And this is why it's such an important play within the homosexual rights movement, the gay rights movement. They try and make out that there's this inflated percentage of the number of, of homosexual people in Australia, when really it's only 1% or 2%. Yet they try and make out that there's this huge number and it's a big deal and we've got, you know, we've got to... But really, all this kerfuffle is over 1% or 2%. But it's because the activists are, are trying to say that power is not only what you have, but power is what the enemy thinks you have. It's all deception. It's all deception. By the way, his book, Rules for Radicals, if you look in the opening page, it was dedicated to the greatest radical of them all, Lucifer. Lucifer. Cultural Marxism. Now, the communists realized they can never de defeat, defeat America militarily, so they strategized to take America down from the inside. Now, listen to what Stalin said. This is fascinating. Stalin said, America is like a healthy body and its resistance is threefold. It's patriotism, it's morality, and it's spiritual life. Let me say that again. It's patriotism, it's morality, and it's spiritual life. He says, if we can undermine these three areas, America will collapse from within. Isn't that interesting? Those three different areas. Patriotism. By the way, if you ever notice leftist, they are self-loathing. You know, we've just, we had, uh, every time it comes around to Australia Day, the leftists come out, oh, we're so terrible of a, of a nation. Oh, we, you know, it's Invasion Day. Invasion Day. Hashtag Invasion Day. These are all the lefties coming out. The self-loathing lefties who hate patriotism. This was a, a chief objective of the Frankfurt School and the Fabian Society, which I don't have time to talk about, but these are the chief institutions that spread cultural Marxism. And we even have a healthy division of the Fabian Society in our universities. Some of our prime, Labor Prime Ministers came out of the Fabian Society. Now, the left's demonization of the right, and this is, a, this is a very interesting one, because they've come up, they've constructed words. For example, let's take the first one, homophobia. Homophobia was first invented by George Weinberg. And so he first came up with the idea in, in the late 1960s. And then there was two gay activists that then put it into print that first went into publication. Guess what publication was? It was a gay pornographic magazine called Screw, and this was in the early 1970s. But from then, they strategized and they worked to force it upon society to accept it. And then we also have transphobia, which is a more recent thing. Then we have Islamophobia. But Islamophobia was, was made up by a front group for the Muslim Brotherhood in the late 90s by a group in Northern Virginia. And they, they came up with this idea. It was a think tank. They came up with this idea that they, it would be the best way to help uh, to shut down critics of Islam. And so they were also pushing to introduce hate speech laws. And the other way they demonize the right is by branding Hitler and the Nazis as right wing. I mean, who's heard that? All of us have heard that. Oh, the Nazis are right wing. They're right wing. They're right wing. What a load of garbage. It's garbage. Hitler represented Massive government, big government. That was all what he was about. Now, socialism, whether it be by uh, Soviet socialism or national so socialism, which is what Hitler was all about, it's still the same thing. By the way, before Hitler invaded Russia, the Russians and the Nazis were friends. They, f they were friends. They shared the same ideology. And by the way, you can't even say the word Nazi in German without saying socialist. Socialist Party. You can't even say the word Nazi without saying the word socialist. So that says something. Now, the other thing they do is they shame uh, patriotic people who love and care for and are genuinely concerned for their country as right-wing nationalists. And this is not going to go away because this is their strategy. They want to stigmatize those on the right. 
Now, it comes from three phases. Now, we've already talked about cultural Marxism. But cultural Marxism naturally leads to socialism, and then socialism leads to communism. This is the progression that they're leading towards. And by the way, this is a spiritual war. Who is behind all this? Satan. Satan. Why? He wants death. Jesus said, the thief comes only to steal, kill, and destroy. Here's some very clear things. See, on the left, you've got relativism. On the right, you've got objective truth. Left, rights come from man. Right, rights come from God. Education based on collectivism. Education based on logic and critical thought. That's a big one. Left, morals are dictated by the state. Right, morals are revealed in God's word. Big government on the left, small government on the right. Um, and I'm, I'm going to skip through these. And then you have individual liberty, uh, where we, the right is all about freedom of speech, but the left want to take away that. They're trying to introduce hate speech laws. Censorship of the press, but we, the right is all about freedom of the press. And then we have privacy can be trumped by minority rights, where the right are all about personal privacy. Now, you, this might seem like crazy moon battery, but there, the New York mayor has now brought into law that transgender men, not actually not just transgender men who dress up as, as a transvestite, but even men who simply identify as a woman can now access women's bathrooms. Change your example. Yep. Not just bathrooms. Yes. Now, this is what I mean by... That's the whole city of New York. The whole city of New York. Isn't that crazy? This is the world that we're living in at the moment. It, it's... it's now, remember, Paul warned that in the last days there will be a great delusion. Great delusion. And we are seeing that big time, absolute big time at the moment. Life and origins. And then you've got life is not sacred on the left. On the right, life is sacred. And this is why we, within the right, there we have a big pro-life movement. We're against abortion because life is sacred. And the left says we are created in the image of apes. And the right, we are created in the image of God. And then we have animal equality. Human life is equal to animal life. Again, this is where the worst form of inequality is trying to make unequal things equal. Okay? So I always say to these lefties who talk about animal equality, and I say to them, if you were walking in a desert and you were thirsty and you had a child with you and you had a dog with you, would you kill the dog to feed the child or would you kill the child to feed the dog? And I'd get a blank response. But this is how crazy this is, this, this understanding. Then you have marriage and family. But we'll just go down to the last point. The left believe it takes the village to raise a child. They want government intervention in raising a child as early as possible. This is why the left are pushing so hard for the Safe Schools Co Coalition program, which is a demonic, demonic, demonic program. By the way, the architect of that program, she has openly admitted that it's not about bullying. Within a, a leaked video, she said it's not about leaked, it's not about bullying. She said it's about getting traditional people or getting normal people to accept sexual diversity and gender theory. The fact that a boy, they're teaching boys that they can be girls and teaching girls that they can be boys. Remember, to the left, they don't believe in right and wrong. They believe in inventing their own system of morality. The yep, the program goes to 11-year-olds. And here's the thing, if you ever dare to stand up against that and say something, you will be bludgeoned, bludgeoned, absolutely smashed, you bigoted, homophobic, racist. You watch their face screw up and they turn red. It is a demonic, seething, vehement rage. 
the environment. Now, that's a big topic, and I'm going to have to leave it because we don't have time. Religion. Social religion on the left. On the right, revealed religion. On the left, equality and rights trump freedom of religion. Where on the right, we're all about freedom of religion. On the left, the Bible is flawed in the work of men. On the right, the Bible is the inspired word of God. On the left, did God really say? On the right, I am the truth. Summary. Left, focus on self. Right, focus on God. Left's doctrine of man. Right, doctrine of God. Left, philosophy of humanism. Right, philosophy of Christ. The left, spirit of this world. Right, spirit of God. Where the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. The end result, on the left, slavery. On the right, freedom. On the left, death. On the right, life. And then you've got your probable, probable destination of hell and heaven. But this is it. And this is a tragic trajectory. But Christian apologist James R. White said this, and he said this on his Facebook account, and I noticed it. But he said the millennials. By the way, do you know what he means when he says millennials? He's talking about those who are born from the year 2000 onwards, the young, the young generation. He's saying the young generation hate our culture, free enterprise, historical Christian ethics and marriage, and are so utterly focused upon one thing, themselves. And listen to what he says here, and this sent chills down my spine when I read it. He said, this is why we will have a full-blown socialist government within a decade. And it was all purposeful, all intentional, all planned, and it worked. How to destroy the nation that stood at the pinnacle of power and influence at the end of World War II. Does that make your heart grieve? Just watch this short little clip. But by the way, when they say liberal, they're referring to progressives, those who identify themselves on the left. And when it talks about conservatives, it's talking about those on the right. In 1980, there were approximately 40% of Americans that were conservative, 10% liberal, and 50% undecided. And since even our numbers show that they are capturing 85% of our young people each year through the educational system, this is how it plays out. In 2012, America was divided at 30% conservative and 30% liberal with 40% undecided. By 2028, it will be 20% conservative, 50% liberal, and 30% undecided. And by 2036, only 20 years from now, it will be 10% conservative, 70% liberal, and 20% undecided. This is simply demographics, and there is no quick fix to change this. 2016 is the last election in my lifetime where it will even be possible to get an actual conservative elected. Sobering, isn't it? And by the way, the future of America is, I mean, the strength of America depends on, on the, is, is dependent on, upon the rest of the world. This is why everyone from every country is, is interested in the American uh, elections at the moment, because it has a bearing on, ev on the rest of the world. And this is why this fight, I mean, we, 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 have got to def we have got to race to defend this. Now, here's the thing. Freedom-loving people have been guilty of complacency and apathy. We have forgotten that freedom is something that must be defended. Ronald Reagan said this, Freedom is never more than one generation away from extinction. We didn't pass it to our children in the bloodstream. It must be fought for, protected, and handed on for, the sun, for them to do the same. Or one day, we will spend our sunset years telling our children and our children's children what it was once like in the United States when men were free. It's in Australia too. It's happening in Australia as well. And 
the left has taken ground and there is no opposition. We've got to take a stand. Absolutely. But you know what? All the political systems of this world will one day be swept away. Hallelujah. All of the political systems of this world will be swept away. Come, let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the temple of the God of Jacob. And he will teach us his ways so that we may walk in his paths. And the law will go out from Zion and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. And he will judge between the nations and will settle disputes for many peoples. And they will beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Nation will not take up sword against nation, nor will they train for war anymore. The Lord will be king over the whole earth. Hallelujah. And on that day, there will be one Lord and his name the only name. Hallelujah. 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 So now on that note, I just want to say, I think many of us here may already be believers. But then to those who are watching via YouTube and you've, you've watched this presentation and you, be, you know in your heart that you're not where you should be. In fact, some of you will be thinking, you know what, Dan, what you've just explained I've just realized, choose life. That's what I would say to you. Choose life. Take a hold of Jesus. He loves you. He loves you so much, so much. And you think, well, Dan, you don't know what I've done. I've, I've done this and I've done that. I'm a sinful man. I'm a sinful woman. I've, I've got so much shame and guilt. There's no way God could forgive me. Yes, he can. He can forgive you. There is no sin too great that cannot be forgiven. The blood of Jesus will cover all of your sin and he'll wash your sin away like wiping a slate clean. He died on the cross for your sin. He took your punishment on the cross so you could avoid that punishment. He took it on your behalf. Did you realize that? on your behalf so you could be free, so you could experience true freedom. Are you ready to pray a prayer to ask Jesus Christ into your heart? Let's pray this prayer. Let's all bow our heads and pray. And repeat after me. Dear Lord Jesus, thank you for loving me. I am a sinner and I repent of my sin. Wash me clean. Set me free. Walk with me into my new life. I believe in my heart that God raised Jesus from the dead. And I confess with my mouth that Jesus is Lord. Jesus, restart my life. From this moment on, in Jesus' name, amen. 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 If you prayed that prayer, then I want to hear from you. Please go to our website at, at www.israelislamandendtimes.com and, and go to the contact page and please send us an email because we need to get you connected into a church family, people who will love you, people who will look out for you, and would look for you, look out for you as one, as uh, as one, of, as a family, and that's that's the, the gospel. It's a gospel where everyone, where the, the brothers and sisters, we all love each other, we look after each other, and you'll be welcomed and you'll be loved. And find yourself a church where they teach the word of God, not where they water it down, but where they teach the word of God, where they preach the gospel. That's where you need to find yourself planted. God bless you, and God bless you. And we'll see you next time.